Can you take me through that moment? And I looked up and saw that red ball on the fish line, and I said, my God, I say, that's the Japanese plane. Here's the big question. Did you shoot anybody down on on Pearl Harbor Day? We were caught with what you might figuratively say with our pants down. We've had Hall of Famers, we've had people that won Super Bowls, and I would say you are the most excited person that I've ever had coming to this building, and I'm very thankful for you coming today, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts forever. Lions home against the Miami Dolphins, so you know what that means. It's time for us to sit down and talk with our Detroit Lions hometown hero. You'll see him honored at Ford Field. It's a good one, folks. I'm excited for this one as Big D Energy would like to welcome Captain Herb Elfring to the show. Born in 1922 in Waterton, South Dakota, he entered the Army National Guard and was deployed to Hawaii in November of 1940. Just a year later, while stationed in Hawaii, he was manning a coastal artillery gun on that fateful day, December 7, 1941, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. After the events of that, the United States officially entered World War II. The very next day, over the next four years, Captain Elfring was stationed in Fiji, the Solomon Islands, and the Philippines when the war ended in 1945. After the war ended, Herb enrolled in the University of Michigan, where he saw a national title of their own during that time, and he earned a bachelor's degree in 1950 and worked for Consumers Energy as an engineer until he retired in 1985. So we welcome Captain Elfring to the show. Uh, wow. uh, Captain Alfring, wow. yeah. That, uh, quite, quite, quite the resume. World War II veteran. We'll get into all that. Are you a candy corn supporter, as I see by the T-shirt right there, Captain Alfring? I, I have eaten it, but I'm not, I can't say that I'm a supporter. <laughs> all right. Man. Well, you're back in my good graces, Captain <laughs> Alfring. No, um, He's probably no. still got candy corn from back in, you know, when he went in the Army in 1940. Well, that was the last time they made it because no one buys it. That's the last time they made it. Right? Absolutely. Captain Alfring, uh, again, appreciate you coming on the show. I, I, I think that I speak for everybody when I have to, when I say we have to start on, uh, on that day. Uh, Pearl Harbor, you were there. You survived the attacks. I, I never have gotten the opportunity to talk to somebody that was there. Can you take me through that moment? Yes. Uh, the morning of this December 7th, 1941, uh, it was a very quiet morning, and everybody was uh, either at breakfast or finished breakfast or maybe still in bed. And I was reading the uh, bulletin board by our barracks when, the, uh, when I could hear a plane coming, but I didn't pay much attention to it until it laid in a line of strafing bullets about 15 feet away from me. And I looked up and saw that red ball on the fish line, and I said, my God, I say, that's a Japanese plane. And uh, it was, I got, yeah. my army camp that was called Camp Malacoli, and it was located just down the shoreline from Pearl Harbor. And I could, I could hear bombing over toward, uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, but they thought maybe it was just a uh, uh, an exercise program and didn't pay much attention to it until that plane came over and strafed right beside me. And it was just a, a short time then and the word got out that we're under attack and uh, and everybody scrambled to their, their normal stations uh, for work duty and uh, my, my station happened to be a, a a radar which was just getting into existence at that time. So uh, that was my job to be on the uh, staff at the, uh, for the radar used for locating planes and uh, uh, especially at night when we, it was necessary to direct our searchlights onto planes. It's great. I'm just, just <laughs> the look, gravity, this is what we're talking man. to, you know, and thank you, obviously, for your service and everything like that, Mr. Ellering. But the fact that he's talking about this is when radar was, you know, first invented of this kind, what they're talking about, like the different things. My question, sir, is you've been around 100 years. <laughs> you are a sports fan, obviously, a Michigan graduate. Do you have any favorite? teams or years or championships that you saw or remember or maybe how about like your favorite player growing up you know you know i'm I, i'm a farm boy from south dakota as, as was mentioned i think and 
my my exposure to uh, sports and especially professional sports as I was growing up, I I really was not exposed to it, so I never had a uh, I hardly I hardly knew what Babe Ruth was was and who he was and then what a great player he was. So uh, my my sports uh, days were uh, after I got. To Michigan and was exposed to them more and since I've been to Michigan here in, in Jackson, Michigan since 1950. Talking to uh, Captain Herb Elfring here on Big D Energy, the Detroit Lions hometown hero. He'll be honored on wow. Ford, at Ford Field uh, this Sunday's game against the Miami Dolphins. And uh, a big thank you to Ronnie Cyrus, by the way, for hooking all this up as you're seeing some of the photos uh, of Captain Elfring back in the day. And uh, University of Michigan graduate. Uh, he also, for his dedicated and honorable service to our nation, received the World War II Victory Medal, American Defense and Campaign Medals. And, you know, Captain Elfring, you're getting a lot of, uh, you know, obviously when we do this, you know, a lot of thank you for your service and stuff like that, and a lot of go blue and, and all that kind of stuff. You excited, you excited for the game this weekend, big game against Michigan State? Oh, absolutely. Every year that's an exciting game, yes. Would you, would you? So he admits it's a rivalry, Spence. So so there you go. So he, <laughs> Captain Elfring gets fired gets fired up for it. Uh, but as we were talking about uh, the survivor of Pearl Harbor, as well. And and I guess just just kind of one more question about that, Captain Elfring. When you know, as as you join the army, and obviously World War One had, had come and passed, and everything like that. Just that that whole that whole temperature of the nation in the moments after that what what was what was that like as a country because we see now right we we have events that happen and and everybody kind of bonds together and 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 away we go was it like that even back then too well uh in the late 30s it was really pretty much a depression time yet right and uh uh young fellows at that time they you know uh would work for a buck wherever they could and joining the National Guard was one way to do that to earn a few bucks on weekend and also camp time and and uh, I, I really I joined the National Guard in Montana when we li- when we lived there when I was younger when I was 16 I should say when I joined then when I moved to uh, San Diego I I, uh, I joined again <laughs> just to uh, uh, have an extra job on a weekend and uh, go to camp. Uh, Captain Alfring here in the WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Scott Klingler says, uh, Hey, Neil, can you tell that hero I can't repay him for what he's done for his country? And thank you so much, sir. And uh, I think we echo those sentiments here. I have a question that I'd be remiss if I didn't ask because I don't get around and I don't think a lot of us get around somebody who's 100 years old right. too much so as much as he's seen or experienced what advice for the rest of us youth out here what, how do you how do you make it to 100 or what advice would you say has got you this far can you give us can you give the youth and the nation some advice <laughs> sir well what's any, the key I'm sure I, everyone experiences through life uh, a lot of close calls and of course, I've had a lot of them, and it makes you feel like, boy, somebody up there is watching over me a lot of times. But uh, to get there, I guess I would have to say that uh, uh, try not to have all the answers for everything, because you know, you, you can't anyway. Uh, uh, Getting, getting through the war and get the, getting the opportunity to go to the Mich- University of Michigan on the GI Bill was uh, a great lift in my uh, lifetime, I'll tell you. Anyway, that's where I met my wife, and uh, uh, when I graduated in 1950, we moved to Jackson and got a job with the uh, local power company, Consumers Power Company, and in the process, uh, uh, I worked for 35 years, but in, in that time we had five children, and they've all uh, grown up, of course, and are doing very well. So uh, to get to where I am, I guess I uh, 
feel that uh, you, you, you just do your job as you go along the best you can, and uh, and I, I think I was quite active in uh, several things, but I never excelled in anything you might say. But I I played I played golf and and uh, tennis and uh, and. Uh, I skied in the wintertime and uh, rode my bicycle and, uh, and did, did everything like that in moderation and uh, stayed active but not overdoing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like it. You know, I want to say one thing, and I don't ever come on the air with you guys. <laughs> and it's emotional for me, to be honest with you, because we've had Stanley Cup champions, we've had Hall of Famers, we've had people that won Super Bowls, um, college championships. And I would say you are the most excited person that I've ever had to come into this Absolutely. building. And I'm very thankful for you coming today. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts forever. And we God bless you, my brother. We're so thankful for you. Yeah. Captain Alfring, certainly do appreciate your time, your service to the country, and thanks for coming on Big D Energy today. I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to do my part. Nah, absolutely. Big thanks to Ronnie Cyrus as well. Captain Alfring will be honored. You'll see him on the field this Sunday at Ford Field. I can't believe they let you knuckleheads have a show. Here's the big question. Did you shoot anybody down on on Pearl Harbor Day? Did I? Did you get to shoot, shoot a plane shoot down? Shoot a plane or? down or anything? Uh, we were caught with what you might figuratively say with our pants down. <laughs> we had absolutely no resistance to respond to the attack. Absolutely none. Ready to go, you know what I mean? All of our guns were in march order position and the uh, the uh, small arms that were uh, would have been could have been used were locked up and and uh, the attack on my my company, my camp, Camp Malacoli. Uh, really only lasted a, a few minutes, you might say. Uh, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, being being attached to a, a radar, and uh, I, uh, when we got the squad out to the radar, we were we were strafed again by one zero airplane, and that one, the line of bullets just went within 15 feet of me again and in the process cut the cut the power cable between the power plane and the radar itself so uh, uh, the type of plane that that hit our camp was not a bomber like was usually doing to drop bombs on the shipping in Pearl Harbor they were just uh, uh, zero planes as I, I figured was uh, escorts for the bombers on the uh, on their way in from their aircraft carrier to Pearl Harbor. Well, your service and, uh, you know, the hundreds of thousands more, uh, certainly, I, you say you got caught with your pants down. I, I, th I, th I think we fixed the scoreboard on that one, though, but when, when, it, when it was all said and done. So, Captain Alfring, I appreciate your time. Again, thank you for your service. And uh, everybody... Uh. Get, bring the noise on Sunday when Captain Elfring's out there on the field. We'll be back with more Big D Energy.